The Healed Being program is a full course on how to stop hurting people you love. I know, I don't do that. I don't hurt the people I love. That was me. I was a former emotionally abusive person. That's exactly how I felt until I learned what healthy love is supposed to look like. If you are at all like I used to be, and you probably know my entire history if you've been listening a while, and you find it challenging to support those you love because you keep getting triggered, check out the Healed Being program over at HealedBeing.com. Life presents the toughest challenges. Every day you are faced with decisions that test your ability to express who you really want to be in this world. We're told to keep saying affirmations and keep thinking positively, but what do you do when that stuff doesn't work? Welcome to the Overwhelmed Brain, where you'll learn to make decisions that are right for you so that you can create the life you want now. Hey, this is Paul Coliani, and I want to help you learn the skills you need to deal with life's challenges using emotional intelligence and critical thinking without compromising who you are. This show consists of my personal opinions and is meant for informational purposes only. Always seek a professional for your mental health and well-being. Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of The Overwhelmed Brain. I am so glad that you are here. I've got a couple things to talk about today. I will try to get to them. One person wrote to me and said, um, I'm 50 years old and divorced. And I found out soon after my divorce, which was like, uh, like almost a decade and a half ago, that uh, my husband cheated on me ever since, even before the engagement, he was cheating on me. And uh, I just realized this. I had this epiphany. I was listening to your podcast and had me thinking about a time in my past where I felt happy and safe. And that's when I was married. And it's just weird to think about. I was horrified to realize that my happiest times were with him many years ago. And I think I'm learning that I have repressed hurt feelings from him leaving. So this is like um, almost 15 years ago, and she has these repressed feelings that she's just maybe learning about. And she said, I want to explore this more. It may help me finally move on. All right. Thank you for writing that. And um, first of all, congratulations, because she wrote more and she said, that she was taking care of her kids. She was the only one that were, were raising her kids and she has support, you know, financial support, but still a lot of hard work. But uh, she's driving along, listening to my show and suddenly she realized, oh, uh, wow, I had all these happy years, but it's interesting because I have all this uh, pain or emotional hurt from him leaving and I haven't dealt with that yet. This is how I handle this stuff. When I have hurt that I newly discovered, you know, something repressed and I have emotional pain from it. Uh, the first thing I do is allow it to be, let's bring it into my awareness. Let's bring it into my consciousness and tell myself, okay, I feel this anger. I feel this sadness. I feel whatever emotion it is. I'm feeling, um, angry right now. What do I do with this? I'm just so angry. Because that's what's going to happen. I, I just want to do something with it. But I need to bring it into my awareness. And this is what I recommend is you bring it into your awareness. Um, don't necessarily push it back down unless you're at a dinner party <laughs> or with friends and you just need to hit, handle it later. you got to process it later. But allow it to come up. Bring it up. I've got these emotions. I've got these feelings. I need to deal with them. Okay, uh, what's next? I have this anger, now I'm angry. Or I have this sadness, and now I'm sad. Acknowledge it. You know, this is, your, this is validating yourself. I'm acknowledging this pain. I'm acknowledging this anger, this sadness, this suffering, whatever it is. So validate. And don't minimize it. Because what ends up happening for a lot of us, well, maybe some of us, some of us will end up minimizing it, saying, I shouldn't feel that way. Yeah, all the suffering in the world, I shouldn't feel that way. Don't minimize it. You, you have to realize that your pain, your suffering, your emotions are real and they're tangible. They are you. They are you and you have to deal with you. You have to process you. You have to figure yourself out or deal with yourself. <laughs> it sounds like a uh, struggle. But what I'm saying is that you have to do these things for you because yes, you can help have other people help you. 
but you still are at the end of the day with you. So this is why it's important not to minimize what you're going through. I am angry. And you might even want to say, I have a right to be angry. Or I have a right to be sad because it really hurt. That event hurt me. And just bring it up. Be conscious. Validate it. Don't minimize it. And then I like to go deeper. I like to ask myself, yeah, but why am I angry? Why am I sad? And this is where I get into maybe what a lot of people have heard me talk about before, stupid questions that lead to healing. Why am I angry? Why am I sad? Well, it's obvious. I like to go past the obvious and really dig. This is my drill down question. Okay, what is uh, so sad about that? What makes me so angry about that? In this person's case, she said, um, he left me. He left me with all these kids that, to raise by myself. He left me with maybe some financial issues and I had to find a new place to live or whatever it is. I'm angry about these things. So bring what you're angry or sad or what emotions that you have. Bring those up. What are those about? And this is acknowledging validating, not minimizing, but even highlighting what you're going through. And again, let me reiterate, do not minimize. Well, I shouldn't feel that way because that's like when some people talk about, you know, I shouldn't be angry at my mom because she tried her hardest. What does that do inside you? It pushes the emotion back down. Even if it's true, even if the idea of being angry at someone because they didn't know any better, or they were trying and they were really, you know, they were just honest. And if you have an emotion, that's real. Again, that's tangible. That's happening inside of you. That has to be dealt with. It has to be processed. So don't minimize once again. And so you um, drill down, ask yourself even more, quote, stupid questions like, yeah, but how is that a problem? So he left me. How is that a problem? And the answer might be, how is that a problem? <laughs> he left me. Yeah, but how is that a problem? Well, uh, anyone would be angry that in that situation. Anyone would feel defeated or confused or sad or whatever it is you're feeling. That's normally where we go. We usually say, well, anyone would feel that. So you drill down even further, deeper. Yeah, but not anyone you. How is it a problem that he left you? And then you're going to come up with the answers because you need to make every thought that you have about that important and valid. You need to make every thought that you have around the emotions that you're feeling important and valid. And when you do that, what ends up happening is that you give yourself something to work with because you'll have nothing to work with if you don't make something tangible. You'll have nothing to work with if you just say, yeah, but anyone would be angry about that or anyone would be sad about that because that doesn't identify what's really going on inside of you. Identify what's going on inside of you. Put it on the table. You want to have something to work with. If you don't have anything to work with, you can't really get past a point of healing. You can't get past the point of actuality, for example, like making something real, reality, actuality, instead of something abstract, like, well, we all have that problem, or we'd all be angry, or we'd all be sad. You have to take it from abstract and make it specific. I'm going to say that I am sad because when he left, I felt so alone. That could be an answer. I mean, one of your answers. I felt so alone. I felt unloved. I felt um, like I couldn't do anything about it. I felt powerless. I felt confused. I felt completely unworthy. I felt like I was a piece of crap and he was just stepping on me. And these are really close to the heart 
the pain, the vulnerability. This is really close to getting to some deeper truths and fears inside of you. Get yourself closer to those truths and fears. Because what's going to happen is the closer you get to what's actually going on inside of you, to the reasons that you have these emotions, is that you start to loosen the grip they have on you. It doesn't mean they go away. You're just loosening the grip because the grip stays tight when you stay abstract, when you stay general, instead of going specific. So a general comment might be, I'm sad because he left me. That's very general. Doesn't really tell you why you're sad, even though people can assume why you're sad. They can assume that you're sad because he left, but there's a lot of uh, components of him leaving. And those components you have to identify. You know, this person who wrote said that, uh, I think I have repressed my hurt from his leaving for 15 years. I need to explore this. Uh, It may help me finally move on. This is something that happens when you either go into denial or you compartmentalize. You put things in a different place and don't deal with them so you can move on from life. So you uh, aren't being hindered by old thoughts, by old emotional trauma. You'll put them away. But the problem is when you put them away, it kind of reminds me of, um, this is a weird reference, but there's an old video game called Warlords back in the arcades, back in the 80s. I talked about this on the show a couple times, and I always use this as a reference because in Warlords, you are controlling this little block character on the screen along with three other players or if the AI is playing against you. But there's a dragon that flies around the screen and spits fireballs at each player's castles. And your little block protects your castle. So you get this dial and you move it left and right. And when the fireball comes at you, it bounces off your block, your guard, and it will go to somebody else's castle and they have to block their castle. Now, you can also catch the fireball. When you catch the fireball, however, when you're holding on to it, these little bits of fire come off and chip into your, your castle. They chip pieces out of your castle. So what ends up happening is your castle is decreasing its protection. It's the walls are, are disintegrating. And the more your walls disintegrate, the more likely your castle is going to be destroyed. So the whole point of the game is to protect your castle from being destroyed. But the uh, walls, as they disintegrate or they get hit by the fireball, uh, will expose the uh, center, which is the vulnerability. If you bounce the fireball back, no flames will come off the fireball and you'll be safe. But if you catch the fireball, that's when, as you hold on to it, the flames come out of the fireball and hit the castle and start chewing away at it. Now, the advantage of catching the fireball is that you get, a, you get to point it at somebody else's castle and hope they miss it. <laughs> so it'll destroy part of their castle. The analogy is, if you're holding on to a repressed negative emotion, it's like holding on to that fireball in Warlords. That fireball, it's like um, it's like a ball inside of you that not only you can feel throughout the years of your life because you haven't processed or healed from it yet, but it's also chipping away at parts of you. It's disintegrating little parts of you incrementally just over time. I mean, just, just tiny little pieces inside of you. It feels like it's eating away at you. It feels like it's hollowing you out. That's a terrible picture that I'm making, but this is what can happen. We hold on or repress negative emotions. We have sadness. We have anger. We have hate. We have shame. We have guilt. We have even fears can do this. We hold on to fear. It feels like it's eating away inside of us. In fact, I can attest. (laughs) I can attest to this because I held on to anger for so long. In my teens, 20s, and 30s, I was so angry, I wanted to get back at my stepfather. And my stepfather became that symbol throughout my life. I was so angry at him, but I was also angry at myself for not doing anything. Of course, I couldn't have done anything when I was a kid. I didn't know what to do, and I was afraid. He was just a a violent, scary person, if you've never heard me talk about him. 
So I would uh, carry this anger around that um, I pushed onto other people. I didn't really uh, show them anger. I would actually just be manipulative and hurtful in other ways. But I had anger inside of me. And so I carried this anger and it turned into dysfunction and toxicity. And the anger was eating away at me because um, one day I couldn't eat garlic. I couldn't eat onions. I couldn't eat green peppers. And, uh, well, the reason was because it was burning inside. And I thought, what the heck is going on? I just keep burning and burning. And whether I ate or not, it felt burning. I felt this burning in my stomach. So I finally went to a doctor and he prescribed something. And two weeks later, I felt great. But I had to give up certain foods. But at the same time, or and at the same time, I learned that my anger was feeding that uh, burning. That anger was causing the burn. An emotion, it uh, manifests in the body as some sort of, um, it's either going to hurt you or help you. Like laughter helps. Feeling good helps. Feeling bad hurts. This is my experience. I'm not saying it's true 100% of the time, but in my life, and people that I know in their life too, when they've held on to negative emotions, it has somehow eaten away at them. Whether physically or mentally, it has caused issues. And when I was angry all the time, I felt it. I felt it in my stomach. Just like people with anxiety might feel it in their chest. I felt anger. I carried it around and I pushed it onto other people in various ways, in hurtful ways. And so this is what I mean is that if you don't get in touch with the deepest negative emotions that you may be carrying around, if you're holding on to something, if you've repressed something, it's important to drill down to the point where you are getting in touch with that, with these questions and such. I mean, you may be able to reflect and go, okay, what's really causing me to feel sad about this? You can go to the worst case scenario. Like what is my worst fear about this? Or what is my worst pain about this? What was I afraid of happening back then? For example, the person who wrote, uh, her husband left her and there were probably fears that she had. And I don't know if there was anger or sadness or feelings of being unloved or unworthy. What was your greatest fear back then? Let's just say that you were unloved. Let's just say that you believed that was true. You were unlovable. What is your greatest fear about that? What's your greatest fear about being unlovable? What's your greatest fear about feeling unworthy? Those fears, they, they touch on stuff too. You may not like these answers or you may not like the questions either, but you may not like what you discover. And um, it's not supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be fun to drill into this stuff, which is why some of us will not want to do it. I can't go there. It's too painful. I get that. And often we're going to find some fear that we held in childhood, or maybe we were neglected by our parents and we wanted to feel more love. Maybe they didn't mean to neglect us. There we go again. You know, We don't want to say that uh, because they didn't mean it doesn't mean we don't feel it. But maybe they weren't there for us in ways that we needed it. Maybe they weren't there at all. Or maybe they were the most loving parents and it still wasn't enough. There was still something missing. I've heard that too. Like, my mom did all this stuff for me, but for some reason, I just feel like there wasn't enough. Or something was missing. That's what we want to get in touch with inside of us. Because sometimes there is something missing. Sometimes... They did the best they could, but I still feel angry at them, or I still feel sad, or I still feel that I couldn't be good enough. One day I got a B plus and I should have gotten an A minus or an A plus, and they were so angry, and I still remember that day. I wasn't good enough. This is where you drill down into that too. What is so bad about not being good enough? What will happen if I'm not good enough? What's my worst fear about not feeling good enough? And so, um, you know, I have an article called Stupid Questions That Lead to Healing. 
You can go to theoverwhelmbrain.com and just type in the word stupid and you'll find it. It'll come up and uh, read that article. It's going to give you a bunch of questions that you can ask to help you drill down into this. And it's going to be like fishing. You're going to fish for those truths and those fears. And it can be scary. It can be scary to, to reveal this stuff, but it can also uh, free you from a lifetime of holding on to it, which is important. When we come back, I'm going to address the person who wrote the email and um, give her some final thoughts on this. Be right back after this. I have been waiting to share this personal experience. It is something I learned by doing StoryWorth. If you don't know what StoryWorth is, StoryWorth is a fun and easy way to write stories about your life or for your loved one to tell their story. And how they do that is StoryWorth sends questions once a week and asks you things like, um, what's the bravest thing you've ever done? Or what's the farthest you've ever traveled? And I've been doing this for a few weeks now. And they sent me the first question, in fact, the first question was, what was your first job like? And I thought about my um, my mom, how she used to take me to the bakery where she worked at like 3 a.m. And I thought, wait a minute, I don't like getting up early. <laughs> and I remember my mom waking up early to go to the bakery. And I said, mom, can I come with you? 3 a.m.? I'm not a morning person. And I had all these thoughts like, maybe I am a morning person. I just don't like to get up. So I enjoyed going down that rabbit hole. I even found old pictures of the city I used to work. So what I learned is that I love connecting with parts of myself that I've forgotten about. So I found a way to keep those memories and pass them along to people who want to see them. So that's why I'm sharing StoryWorth with you today. Help your family share their story this holiday season with StoryWorth. Go to storyworth.com forward slash brain. Go there today and you'll save $10 on your first purchase. That's S-T-O-R-Y-W-O-R-T-H dot com forward slash brain. You'll save $10 on your first purchase. Storyworth.com forward slash brain. I'm loving it and I can't wait till I get all my stories in a beautiful keepsake book at the end of the year. And another sponsor of ours today, I, I definitely want to share with you BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service. It has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. So if you've been having trouble connecting with that deeper part of yourself like I've been talking about today, this is a path for you if you can't connect with that part of yourself because sometimes it's very hard to see outside the emotional fish tank that we're swimming around in. We don't think we can get to it from there. So this is where BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp gives you all the benefits of professional therapy without having to leave your house. You can just do it right in the comfort of home. You can do it inside your car, wherever it's convenient for you. You know, life doesn't come with a user manual. I try. I'm putting it out there, <laughs> trying to give you everything I know. But sometimes you just need that one-on-one. -on -one. And the benefit of one-on-one -on -one has been huge in my life. I've been able to share very deep personal things in my life with a therapist and just walk out the door and leave those problems behind me. BetterHelp is there to help you do just that. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Sign up today and get 10% off your first month when you go to betterhelp.com forward slash brain. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com forward slash brain. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com forward slash brain. Welcome back. Like I said, I'm going to come back to this person's email and I just want to give them sort of a summary, a, a direction to go. You know, you went through something many years ago and if you want to uncover this stuff, which I think you should, I think it, it's time for it to come up and out of you, bring it to your consciousness, validate it, confirm it, don't minimize it and drill into it. And this is how you start to unravel what's going on inside of you. And just get in touch with it. It's not going to maybe heal itself overnight, but maybe it will. I know I've done that before. I've discovered uh, an emotion or some old stuff inside of me that I 
was able to resolve. I remember, um, I'm going to go on a sidetrack here, but I remember my girlfriend brought something up once and it triggered me. And she thought, whoa, okay, you have an issue with that. And I was just triggered. I was angry and I was stubborn. And I said, no, it's not going to happen. And I, I was just all about me and protecting me and making sure nothing bad that I perceived as bad was going to happen. So I just said, no, I'm not going to do it. You know, something like that. And then I went into my room, <laughs> whatever room that was, and I reflected and I thought about it and I did drill into it. I like, why am I so angry about this? And I asked myself like one question, like, is this belief still real? Is this belief still valid? Because I had beliefs that if X happened, I would feel this way. And I held on to that belief without question for a long time. Is this belief still valid? Is it real? Does it even apply anymore? Am I just being stubborn? <laughs> Am I just uh, holding on to a belief for some sort of self-protection? And what am I protecting myself from? What's going to happen? I think that's another question I ask myself. What's the worst thing that could happen if this thing happens? You know, whatever I was uh, talking about back then. And um, I came up with the answers. I came up with uh, the thoughts that I really hadn't given thought to before. I came up with the emotions that were stuck in there. I came up with the beliefs that were stuck in the past that I carried with me for many years. I had these beliefs that I just carried with me and never changed them. That was an emotionally closed mind. I didn't want to deal with um, a new belief. I didn't want to change what was comfortable to me because it protected me for so long. I was emotionally closed in that area of my life. And that started to break open and break apart, loosening the grip, when I finally dug into it. And so my girlfriend thought I was triggered and there was no way out of it. And she knew that she was going to have to deal with me for the rest of the night. And we weren't going to talk about it because that's how I felt. But about an hour later, an hour later, I went out and I said, you know, I'm sorry. I, I was triggered and I'm okay now. And she looked at me funny and she thought, yeah, right. <laughs> that's not true. And I said, no, no, I really am. I thought about it and I realized that's just stupid. I, I can't believe I even said that. Well, I don't know if I said that, but I said, I am okay now. I've thought about it. I've reflected upon it. And I realized that um, it doesn't matter. I'm okay with it. And she said, are you sure? And she said, you know, that was really quick. Or, I don't understand because, you know, that doesn't just disappear. I said, I'm okay. I, I'm perfectly fine. So my mind changed, my emotions changed, everything changed within an hour. This can and does happen. When you hit on what's really true inside you, maybe a true fear or an old belief, something that has had a grip on you for a long time, when you really connect with it and you break it apart and you decide that, that maybe it's not something to fear anymore. And maybe you've been protecting yourself for a long time, but it's not necessary anymore. And I'm not saying that you think these things consciously, because sometimes this stuff will just disappear by itself. Like I didn't say, okay, I don't have to hold on to that anymore. I just got in touch with it. I just allowed it to come to my consciousness and allowed myself to dig into my scary place, my fears, my darkest beliefs, everything that has held me down for many years from not being able to let this go. Because this is what happens is that we can think that we have healed so much and we don't really have to deal with anything anymore. Uh, but you know, February 29th comes every four years and on February 29th, we're suddenly triggered. <laughs> it's like after many years, I'm triggered by this. I thought this was over. I thought I didn't have any more triggers. What, what is this? Well, February 29th only comes once every four years. So I didn't know until four years later that I was going, going to be triggered again. This is what happens when we don't have the stimulus around until we're around that stimulus. That made no sense. <laughs> it's like not seeing your high school bully for 20 years 
and feeling like, hey, I'm okay, everything's good now, I don't feel intimidated anymore, I don't feel afraid, I can walk around feeling pretty good in myself. Um, and um, then suddenly your high school bully shows up and you, you regress into a child. You regress into that child state of fear because the stimulus is back. But you didn't know it was there. You thought you were over it. But the stimulus is back and then suddenly, oh, I, I better watch it around this person because they were such a bully and I don't want to feel the way I used to feel back then. I do wonder if that's still in me. <laughs> I wonder if that's in me. Do you wonder if that's in you? Maybe, I don't know, but maybe you, did, you weren't bullied. But I, I had some high school bullies that um, weren't even that bad. But back then, wow, I, I really felt it. I, I felt bullied. I felt intimidated. I felt like there was nothing I could do, even though a lot of people had it worse than I did. But remember what I said. Their experience is theirs. Yours is yours. Yours is real to you. Theirs is real to them. Theirs may be a lot worse than yours, but you still have to deal with yours. So this is why I say it's important to validate and confirm everything that you went through, you felt, so that you don't minimize it and deny it and push it down because it's real. It is real. It's not just something that you can push away because you have to deal with it. You have to heal from it. You have to process it so you can move on from it. And it involves just getting in touch with it. So the person who wrote, thank you so much for writing. I am so glad that you have discovered this, even though it's unpleasant. But believe me, once you start to work on this and clear it out, life goes a lot better. <laughs> life is a lot, I wouldn't say easier, but the emotional state that you can get in after clearing some of this stuff out or even just acknowledging it. Hey, it's there. It's like telling your inner child, hey, I know you're hurting. I know you are, but I'm here and I'm going to help you through it. I'm going to make sure that you get through this so we can have much more fun in life. We can be in a much better place inside of ourselves. Would you like that? <laughs> I know my inner child would say, yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. And then we would move forward from there. I might have to work on it every now and then, but you will start to feel lighter as you move through this stuff. So thank you to the person who wrote, I wish you the best through this. I wish you much strength and healing. And uh, you're going to make it through this. You're going to get there. Thanks so much for sharing that. And thank you for tuning into this episode of The Overwhelmed Brand. I'm going to cut it a little short because it is December 24th, 2022 as I record this. And um, I still have stuff to do. <laughs> I still have something to do for the holidays and I got to get to it. You know how it goes. Got to get to it. I am so glad that you joined me today. We'll be right back with my thank yous and my goodbyes and my final words right after this. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Overwhelmed Brain. I want to thank the patrons this week. Patrons of the week are Brad, Holly, Nathan, Jamie, Angel, Crystal, Michelle. Very grateful for you. Thank you so much for your support. These are the financial backers of the show. I am so grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you, patrons. These are the people that found value in the show and had the means to give back and chose to do so. And I am so grateful. If you find value in the show like these patrons did, you can become a patron too over at moretob.com. There are options to do that over there. Thank you again, patrons. I appreciate all of you. And for a show on how to deal with difficult relationships, you need to navigate through some manipulation, control, emotional abuse, or some other stuff going on, visit loveandabuse.com. That's my other podcast where I talk about all kinds of stuff regarding uh, any kind of relationship, really. But... Any kind of difficult relationship is exactly what we talk about over there. And if you know you're the difficult one in the relationship, head over to healedbeing.com if you want to change that about yourself. Sometimes we have emotional triggers that we just can't control and we want to learn how to do that because we want to stop hurting the people we love. I have a full, effective, powerful course that is going to help you change from 
the person that's hurting people they love to the person that's creating the healthiest, most loving, nurturing, supportive relationships, not only with them, but with yourself as well. That's called Healed Being over at healedbeing.com. First four lessons are free, no credit card required for the trial. Uh, even in the first four lessons, you'll get some really good stuff. So head over there if you're working on that inside yourself and you want the best chance at saving or salvaging the relationships that you have. Healedbeing.com. And finally, thanks to Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com for some of the music transitions in the overwhelmed brain. And for my final words, I'm just going to read you a message. Let me see. This person wrote, Hey, I'm ready to say thank you for sharing how you forgave yourself and made a commitment so you could move forward after giving up your cats. She's talking about the episode, Helpful Ways to Respond to the Difficult Person. I obviously needed to hear that at the moment as it felt like you were speaking to me and giving me permission to forgive myself for the decisions that I'm not proud of. And I felt a bit of the shame cloud start to lift. I even got out my journal while I was listening so I could take notes and go back to them to start working toward less self-abuse, more self-love, and self-worth. I'm in my 50s, and after years and uh, of cycles of abuse, including self-abuse, I'm tired and numb. I'm ready to change my life, and I'm so grateful for what you are putting out into the world. I feel like I can change my life around thanks to you. Forever a fan. Thank you. Oh, that is a wonderful message, and I'm not patting myself on the back by reading this to you. I want to convey that, yes, you can get past all the shame or embarrassment or the hatred towards yourself even, or things that you didn't think you could get past before, just by allowing yourself to do everything that we talked about in this episode. This is why I'm reading this to you now, is that once you are willing to forgive how you showed up in the past and willing to just allow what happened to be in the past and don't get stuck on what happened, but be focused on what you are doing today and what energy you can give toward the people you care about and the people that care about you today. Once you start reflecting on what's most important today and allowing yourself and forgiving yourself and being okay that you made mistakes. Once you do this, once you realize it's okay to make mistakes and even to mess up badly, once you allow that to exist in your life that you messed up and that's how it was. That's what you were. That's where you were. That's what you did. And that's what happened. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it anymore. There's nothing you can do about it. So you forgive yourself a break. You can move on. You realize you weren't that person you are today. I mean, because that's where regret and shame come from. It really does. It's like we think about who we are today and then we think, oh man, why didn't I just do something different back then? I feel ashamed. I feel guilty. Because if I had done something different, then I wouldn't feel this shame or guilt. But the shame or guilt couldn't exist unless you improved yourself, unless you had healthier thinking like you do today. The shame and guilt cannot exist in someone that hasn't evolved. The shame and guilt cannot exist in someone that hasn't gotten smarter. The shame and guilt cannot exist in someone that cares. So if you feel shame or guilt or regret in anything in life, for whatever happened in your life, if you feel any of those things, that's because you've improved. You've emotionally evolved. You have done the work. You have loved yourself enough to improve yourself, to work on yourself, to bring the best version of yourself into the world and into your relationships. A person that hasn't improved doesn't feel shame or guilt. I mean, just think about that for a second. A person who hasn't improved, who hasn't reflected on what they've done in their life and the decisions they've made, who hasn't emotionally evolved, they're the ones that don't feel shame or guilt. There's a big lesson in there. There's a big kudos in there to you. This person who wrote and anyone that's listening if you feel shame, if you feel guilt, that means you're a really good person. 
That means that you have reflected and healed and improved and done everything you can and everything in your power to become a better you. I think that is a wonderful thing. I don't want you to feel shame or guilt. Of course not. But if you do or you have, that means you've done the work or you've done a lot of work to heal and become the best version of yourself so that you don't do the same mistakes that you did before or show up in the same way. I mean, sometimes it's not even a mistake. Sometimes it's just an accident. Some accidents just happen. And then we try to make sure that we don't do those mistakes or have those accidents. Again, we do our best. The person that doesn't improve themselves, they're not going to feel shame or guilt. They're, they're going to be in the same space they've always been. I think we might know some people like that. <laughs> I think we might know people that have done things that they don't feel shame or guilt or embarrassment or they don't feel anything because they're the same. They're the same way they've always been. And if you have felt shame or guilt or anything like that, that means you've improved. That means you are a good person. I mean, that's my opinion. I think you're a good person if you feel bad for something you did. That says a lot about you. And this person who wrote, yeah, it's time to move forward. It's great that you can move forward because this is the direction you're going. It's the momentum that you need to get past it and move on. You deserve to move on because the people who love you and support you want you to be happy and they want your present energy. They want your presentness with them. They want you to be with them, not staring in the rearview mirror, not focused on something that you have no control over the past. We have no control over the past. I used to be a jealous type who would think about my partner's past. Oh, you did that in the past? Oh, you did that? And I would be judgmental about that. I was judgmental. I was a critical person about someone's past, their past, not even mine, theirs. And it's not even a time I knew them. I, when I think about who I used to be, I, I wonder, how did these people stay with me for so long? That's just an awful thing to do to someone. And believe me, I know if you're feeling that way, if you are upset about someone's past, I do have an episode on that. I forget what it's called. I'll I'll look it up or you can write to me. But the the thought that we are judging someone for their past, that makes me uh, feel like, uh, what? so wait a minute, I can still be judged for things I did in my past that, at a time where you didn't even know me? <laughs> so I remember that's who I used to be. I remember being judgmental about someone else's past. I mean, they're the ones that have to live with it, not me. That's their past, not mine. I don't know what made me think of that. <laughs> the idea that I used to uh, focus on other people's past. I think that's what it was. I was focused on other people's past. So not only was I thinking about my own past and trying to get past that, but now I have other people's past to think about. Boy, I, I was just inundating myself with lots of problems. No wonder I was never really present in my relationships. Until now. You know, I, I think I'm pretty good now. <laughs> I was not present. I was in the past if not mine, theirs. And that's what it does to us. It keeps us from evolving. It keeps us from moving forward. And it keeps us in a place that uh, people feel like uh, they can't connect with us. I can't connect with you because you're always bringing the past up or thinking about something that I don't have no control over anymore because we don't. We have no control over the past. That's why it's wonderful to move forward. Now, I, I have episodes on guilt. If you feel guilty and you still can't get past it, definitely go to theoverwhelmedbrain.com. Look up guilt. I've got a ton of episodes on that. And uh, I believe guilt is supposed to be fleeting. Just like shame. Shame is supposed to be fleeting. You're supposed to deal with it. There are ways to deal with it. There are ways to deal with guilt. But you deal with that. And yes, you can still feel bad for some of the stuff that happened or all of it. But you shouldn't carry guilt with you forward. Guilt is supposed to be a temporary emotion. It's supposed to help you change. And this is what guilt and shame do. They help you improve. So when you're ready to move forward, it's because you've done the work and you have improved. And you're telling people in the world that that's not me anymore. That's not the type of person I am. I'm never going to do what made me feel that way anymore because that's not who I am anymore. I have 
done the work. I have healed from many things. I have changed many things about myself. So I am not that person anymore. I don't have to hold on to that guilt. There's more to it. I mean, I could go on and on about that, but I do in other episodes. So don't just take that at face value. Just definitely listen to the episodes I have on guilt or shame at theoverwhelmedbrain.com. Use the search field and you'll, you'll find it. Uh, thank you so much for writing this. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. I am so glad that you are here. Be safe. Be warm. And always keep an open mind because that's where your power is. That's how you create the life you want. Always take steps to grow and evolve. You are already powerful beyond measure. And above all, and this is something I absolutely know to be true about you, you are amazing. Amazing.